While iPad supplies will remain the biggest concern for Apple in the short term, the company still needs to answer the challenge from Amazon and Google in the cloud. Apple is inching closer to a deal with major record labels to store music remotely in the cloud, as they say. And for more on this, we're joined by Ted Cohen from Singapore. Ted is a managing partner at TAG Strategic. He's a music industry consultant who formerly ran EMI's digital division. And while at EMI, Ted was instrumental in crafting the licensing agreements upon which the iTunes Music Store was built. Uh, Ted, good to have you here on the Inside Track. Let's talk about the competition between Apple and Google and good Amazon. Uh, they are all fighting for a piece of the same pie. What do we know so far? Apple hasn't made any public announcements about these record deals, but based on what we've heard, how much different is what Apple is going to sell us going to be from what we're currently getting from Google and Amazon? Well, I think Apple got a softball here because Google and Amazon have both launched services that fell way below what consumers expected. I mean, the idea of a cloud service would be something where I would have access to my music wherever I am. I could create playlists. I could do all kinds of different things to basically have a, a really rich experience. Both Amazon and Google decided that they would go down the path of not doing deals with the labels and the publishers that really restricts how consumer friendly these offerings can be. So Apple has the opportunity now to really come out with a very rich cloud-based service. So, so but at the same Ted, time, you've got to ask, do we need a cloud service? Right. Yes. Well, which is, which is my question. Is this offense so, or defense that Apple is playing? Because on the one hand, you've got Amazon and Google, but on the other, you've got Pandora, Rhapsody, Spotify, all of these streaming services that seem perhaps to present an even greater threat to Apple's iTunes business. Well, I mean, I think the service that Apple should be looking at, and I believe they probably are in the long term, it'll be interesting to see what they come with now. But in the long term, you now have a library out there of roughly 10 to 15 million legal tracks of music that are available to the services you mentioned. Uh, Mog and Spotify and RDO, uh, all these services have huge libraries uh, in the interactive version. Pandora, who you mentioned, is a non-interactive service, but it's had huge uptake, I mean, in excess of 50 million users. The problem right now is that people don't have access to a service wherever they are that allows them to combine their music libraries with the service that's offered. So in my case, just to, to be specific, I have a lot of live recordings. I'd like access to those in a cloud service and I'd like to integrate them into the music service that I sign up for. If Apple offers something like that, that's something I'm gonna to gravitate to immediately. I see, so it would require you being able to upload things that you have that are in your personal library that may not be available mm -hmm. from the iTunes store, so it would have to be this collaborative service between Apple effectively and your own personal taste and maybe your own, your own personal recordings. Right, and, that's, and I think that's where, where, the, where the competitive edge is right now. I don't see the need, a few years ago, the idea of being able to upload my music you know, was an interesting idea. The idea of cloud services locker, what we call music lockers, has been around for over 10 years. Uh, MP3.com, Michael Robertson very famously launched MyMP3.com around 2000, but was promptly sued by the labels and the publishers for creating a master library of music without licenses. This scared everybody off and it's taken literally 10 years to get back to this point. But when we got to this point now, around this, these really rich music services have debuted. Now, none of them have more than a million users on in the interactive services. Pandora has 50 million, but that's non-interactive influenced radio. But the other services, Rhapsody, which is a great service, is just somewhere around 800,000. None of these services have creeped over a million. Ted, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Clearly, you outlined the challenge for Apple, getting more than a million users to this interactive service. We'd love to have you back. Ted Cohen, he's a managing partner at TAG Strategic. We're talking about the iTunes moving to the cloud.